So the UK, as Michael said, got a new prime minister today. Now, how does that? Yes, that was. I mean, it should be specific enough. Okay, the Falklands should be returned to Argentina. Michael would have a point A. Okay, it should, it shouldn't. Point B, why this is right, why this is wrong. Point C, why this, you should be able to, to build an essay around it. I mean, it, I, I'd have to look at what you were doing to render a judgment about if the thesis is right or wrong. So just come in, come in. You talk to me after class or come in on Thursday with your questions or with your statements. Uh, it's not, you know, the end of the world. Just either way. So what will happen to yesterday when a new prime minister is appointed? Appointed. Now yesterday the uh, prime of history happened and the prime minister uh, went and kissed hands with the Queen in Scotland. And the new Prime Minister has not been appointed in Scotland before. So this was history of the making. Liz Truss and Boris Johnson flew up to Balmoral Castle, the Queen's summer residence that looks frighteningly like a German castle in, in, the, middle of, uh, in the middle of Scotland, where it was built by Prince Albert. consort of Queen Victoria. So the cabinet manual states the prime ministers hold office in less than until they resign. And historically uh, speaking, and she even could pay, really, if she wanted to, the queen, the monarch could dismiss the prime minister and make a personal choice of successor. And the last time that happened was in the 60s, and it did not go well, which is why So if an incumbent Prime Minister's party wins an overall majority, as in 2019, they continue in office, although by custom they still seek an audience with the monarch. So they just they'll go up and they'll say, if you skip down a little bit, you know, when 2015, uh, David Cameron simply informed the Queen of his willingness to continue his commission as Prime Minister. So ma'am, I will continue, basically. What, you know, happens. The Prime Minister chooses to resign. Boris did not choose to resign. The party, in this case the Conservative and Unionist Party, goes and has a leadership contest in which it came down to Liz Truss, the Foreign Secretary, and Rishi Sunak, the, um, what was he, the former Chancellor? Right. I think so. Yeah. That's what I've heard. Yeah. And after that leadership contest is over, then and only then does Boris, you know, did Boris tender his resignation when there was somebody clear to replace him. Uh, so, yeah. The arrangements for a change in prime minister are usually made by the monarch and prime minister's respective private secretaries. Yes, sorry, if uh, if one chose to resign, like, on their own, uh, rather than being coerced or whatever, yeah. would there be an interim, you know what I'm saying, would they there still could have be. to wait? There, I mean, there could be, there could also be a deputy prime minister who would maybe take over and, and have a, what's called a caretaker government. Okay. Yeah. So Buckingham Palace, will call an incoming premier, Telling them to stand by <laughs> to, to see the Queen. And yeah, that's about it. The outgoing Prime Minister goes in to see the monarch, says, Ma'am, I'm resigning. I've lost the confidence of my party. Then she goes, says, Okay, see you later, dude. And then the new one comes in and kisses hands. 
cake. And the queen asks if you would form an administration in my name, because it is still her government. And that is about it. I'm not going to go through this entire uh, article, except on page six. You know, it's the phrase kissing of hands, or three, excuse me, page three, towards the bottom. There is also no kissing of hands, although that phrase is used to describe the process. This used to occur, but has fallen into the bands, and I just thought this was funny. Tony Blair, however, recalls tripping on the carpet, so he practically fell upon the queen's hands. Not so much brushing as enveloping them. So you just bow, and you shake. And you don't speak until the queen speaks. And that's about it. So the new prime minister is Liz Truss, former foreign secretary. And I don't, and I don't want to be standing the whole time, so I'm going to move this back here. And I'm not getting Christian because I know he doesn't he doesn't want to be on video. But this will do it. Nobody is in the picture. Yeah, this will do it. Okay. See, I remember. I remember. It's all right. You can have me on camera. It's Precisely where we were. And then we got Dennis Skinner. And then we got that right there. So. Powers in the chamber. This guy was that one. Oh, I, yeah, a complaint. So whether a complaint of privilege, whether an MP committee or servant of the House has been obstructed, should be put to the House. So Rob and I walk into the chamber. Rob and I are in opposing political parties. Rob decides just to deck me one. I raise a point of a complaint of privilege to the Speaker asking for Rob to be formally punished. It would be up to him to decide that. If the Speaker thought I had thoroughly earned that punch, then maybe he wouldn't say a thing. Is there like some sort of immunity? Yes. One wouldn't be arrested for assault, battery, uh, in that scenario? Oh, uh, no. Uh, just speech. Okay. You you can't be arrested or, yeah. or charged or anything. It's like here. You, but yeah. We got it from there. You can't be charged or anything for what you say I just meant, like, in the house. Asking them to punish them like, would be uh, uh, getting locked up, or likely? It would be dealt with in-house. Okay, that's right. Most likely. Uh, that probably would have been ignored once upon a time, but speakers these days and, and how the political culture is over there and over here, it, it, it wouldn't be tolerated physical assault yeah. by any stretch. So I, I explained to you the casting vote, I think. A matter put to the House must be decided upon. There can't be a tie. So in case of a tie, the speaker has the casting vote and he's protected by historical principles again uh, uh, it, uh, uh, tradition is as good as a law any decision should be taken by a majority of the commons it shouldn't be like in the senate here Kamala Harris walks in she says I okay the democrats get 51 votes the bill passes that's not thinking and I have to say I agree with that form of thinking you shouldn't create a majority it's a 50-50 split it probably should fail no 
no matter what the bill is. Regional guardian. Yeah, uh, just my opinion. You're perfectly. I, I I hope you disagree. Some of you, but I think we're all you know, entitled to that. Uh, so the chair would vote aye on a casting vote uh, during the second reading to allow further discussion. You know, like Rob was saying, rebuild arguments, things like that. And he would vote no on the third reading because that's the end of the road. They could become a law after that. So on the basis that the speaker shouldn't create a majority where there is none. And this very rarely happens. 1993, 2019, those were the last two times there was a tie. I was in the House of Lords once when there was a tie. They don't do this casting vote thing. The speaker there is nearly as powerful So the speaker may recall the House, the media says the Prime Minister has recalled Parliament. This isn't necessarily true. Uh, the standing order of the House says the government ministers have to make representations to the speaker. And if he agrees that the, uh, the speaker then appoints a time for the House to sit. And the speakers always thought that the House should be the first to hear of developments in government policy, and it really should. Our ministers have had a tendency and a, a desire to go on Sky News or ITV and say, this is what we're doing, this is what we're doing, here we go, here we go, and they get told off rather soundly in the House of Commons when that happens. Lindsay Hoyle current speaker has very strong views on that matter, as he should. His predecessor, Burkow, had strong views on that matter. Burkow was just a lot louder about it when a government minister would do that. So speakers advocate for parliament and its rights. Now, the rise of urgent questions, which is something Burkow was and should rightfully be credited for, uh, has meant that the government has to explain things to the commons even if they hadn't planned on doing so and the government hasn't always liked that. Who wants to explain things, right? The most often change in proceeding comes about by a series of rulings by the speakers. So they'll make this ruling, that ruling, that ruling, and points of order and then procedure and proceedings of the House would have shifted in such a way that now they're doing things in style number two as opposed to style number one, which they had been. And they have to do something drastic every now and then. And I, we did cover this last week, I think. Do you mind if I keep going or do you want me to skip ahead a little bit? I can keep going. Oh, well, I don't. I don't want to bore you. So if I mean, because this is ringing a bell. Or now we that, see it tomorrow, yeah, yeah. Well, the last thing I ever want to do is bore like, bore students. <laughs> I, I hear enough stories from you where you, you, you guys are bored enough in, in other places. <laughs> so Brand. Speaker Brand had to do this. He had to limit the right to speak uh, because the Irish Home Rule MPs were causing a big ruckus. Before that, MPs could speak for as long as they wanted on an issue. And I love it when you guys speak, but I, I don't love it for when, when you speak just however long you want. It's for the rest of my so. <laughs> Be judicious. Make your point. Back off. So, uh, the speaker doesn't have to make these decisions about precedent change by himself. The clerks, and I say clerks again because it's pronounced that way over there, uh, of the House, uh, very knowledgeable people, 
uh, Burkow gave an interview once where he said something to the effect of, of clerks of the House of Commons have to wait something I like 20 years before they can sit at the speaker's table. I, 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 I don't know that I want to wait that long. I might go find another career in the interim. <laughs> uh, yeah, the clerk, senior colleagues, the deputy speakers, the deputy speakers certainly know something. They sit in the chair. Now that Lindsay Hoyle is speaker nearly as much as Lindsay does, uh, but decisions are ultimately the speakers, so the MPs can criticize the speaker, and they often do, uh, for putting down a motion, especially when Brexit was going on. Burkow couldn't make a right call to save his life. Uh, one of these motions in 2009 led to the resignation of that man, who uh, is deceased. So I, I, mean, I have rather strong Three motions of this kind have been debated since World War II. Uh, this is the current first deputy speaker. She's the chairwoman. She wants, she wants to be called the chairwoman. So that she's the chairman, technically, and that's what her title is, the chairman of Ways and Means, which is, you know, the, they keep the lights on from the, the Commons, do things right. So he has three deputies. Dane Eleanor Lang, who's the chairman of Ways and Means, and two deputies other than that. And the members were appointed for the duration of a parliament by the House before 2010, so they'd say before 2010, all right, Dane Eleanor Lang, you can serve until we dissolve in 2015. Uh, but in 2010, they started electing them. And uh, they're, again, not like the speaker in that they, they don't keep the deputy title for as long as they want to, unlike the speaker. Uh, so the chairman of Ways and Means, that lady, uh, she exercises most of the power of the speaker. Whilst in the house, the speaker is in ultimate control always, but while she is in the house, she can and does exercise as much power as, as he can. So she has three other distinct roles. She oversees the consideration of private bills or private members' bills. Uh, they often don't have a prayer of being passed or even heard. Strides were made in the latter years of the Burkow speakership towards fixing that but it's still kind of the way it is. Uh, they, she supervises arrangements for sittings in Westminster Hall on that photo, that picture there. It's not a photo really, it's more of a painting-ish thing. Uh, it arranges for sittings in Westminster Hall. Now debates can happen in Westminster Hall too. Um, and they have the same effect. It's the same thing as if it took place in the House of Commons. It's the same effect and it, but it's the same thing for the wards. If the wards sit there, it's just as if they're in the House of Lords. It's a big, big place. And that ceiling, the, what I have here doesn't do it justice, but it is, I think it just goes on and on. It is made of wood, supported by wood. Does this thing not fall in on itself? It just <laughs> kind of like that. I mean, construction, I mean, I don't want to criticize the work of any engineer, even though they, you know, the thing was built in the late 1800s. But it's just like, how does this thing stay upright? But Winston Churchill, uh, the Queen Mother, a whole bunch of people lay in state there. They have the deputy and second deputy have the powers of the chair in the house. And as I said, 
last time we met, no decision of the three deputies can be appealed to the speaker. The deputies are the authority in the house when they are there. Now I'm sure that doesn't mean that the speaker doesn't have a quiet word with one of them when he wishes they hadn't done something. But uh, no, they're, they're it when they're in the chair. So Eleanor Lang is the chairman. The first deputy chairman, Dame Rosie Winterton, who I believe, you, no, I, you, I don't believe you did see her a little bit uh, the last time we met. Uh, she was making the pitch for why she'd be the best speaker. And uh, that guy right there is Nigel Evans. The three deputies come from both sides of the house to cancel out the losses of the government and opposition. So, uh, yeah, Boyle and Winterton came from Labor, uh, Lang and Evans, conservative. And these guys don't have to resign. When they're not in the chair or not scheduled to be in the chair, they, they sit on the back benches and, and take parts and part debates and vote and do all those things that normal MPs do. And on the conclusion of their service, they return to their party back benches and take the party whip. And take the party whip. Uh, that's a complicated way of saying, all right, the whip hands you a sheet of paper like this, and it tells you at 8 p.m. be here, at 8.30 p.m. be here, at 8.45, uh, you better vote this way or else, and at 9 p.m. go home. So it's, a, it's kind of just a schedule of what to do, what you're supposed to do. And now we go back to the House of Lords. has a lot less power. No, not the monarchy. No lords. And he's not nearly, to my mind anyway, he's more of the dignified part of the conversation. The speaker of the commons is, you know, shout, order, order, all the time. The speaker of the, the, the Lords does not, very rarely says anything. It's a self-regulating body. They get up, one will stand up and say, my noble lords uh, will recall that comparative politics starts at 1030. And then Rob will get up and say, my noble lords, I think comparative politics is the greatest class on earth. And then Michael will get up and say, and Jonathan Parker should be given a raise and and that's what they do and for some reason they can't figure out how to do that in the commons they need a guy to shout order 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 all day long so the lords about 800 members 850 in reality yeah sorry is it just the the, the subject matter that makes it more contentious or? Um, they, they kind of I mean, we, we stole big time from them. The, the Senate is kind of, sort of, roughly, not really, but for the purposes of this analogy, like the House of Lords, it's meant to be just kind of the, the cooling chamber where you know things are debated more rationally than they might be in the House of Commons. So this assembly, this uh, house includes peers, bishops, bishops wear their robes when they're there. That was interesting to see members of the clergy in the, <laughs> the assembly. Judges, they're appointed, they're not elected. Some uh, are there by hereditary privilege. Their dad, granddad, great-granddad, great-great-granddad times 
ad infinitum back into the Middle Ages were there, but that's only 90, 99. I think it's 90, I think I heard 93. 93. 93 hereditary peers, and it's, lim and it's limited by law. Lim yeah, yeah. Note that was an invention of Tony Blair. So these guys are, are limited by law and how many, you know, so some of them sit there by hereditary right. Uh, others, you know, they're appointed by the queen on the advice of the prime minister. So the House of Lords questions and challenges the work of the government. The House of Lords works with the House of Commons to make laws. It's like our system, the bill goes from the Commons to the Lords. The Lords can even start a bill and then it goes to the Commons. It's a bicameral legislature. The Lords, like the Senate, can't start funding bills, though, monetary bills, just like our Senate can. It's, it, it's just a real old, I'm not even going to get into it, it's a real old parliamentary thing that goes way back when. It's way too difficult to explain even in 10 minutes. All right. So they look at issues through committees and debates try to improve the way the UK is governed. So like the NHS, their National Health Service, fracking, uh, save, common post office. I bought this slide shot, I've never been sure what save the common post office meant, but that's what they, they, they were very concerned about that at one point. Uh, and they work with the commons to improve the way the country is run. Now that is a very old photo of John Kerry, who's right there, uh, Speaker Burkow, and William Hague, who was a member of the government and uh, leader of the Conservative and Unionist Party forever uh, until he was made a lord and then just kind of went away. That's I mean that's how they get rid of these guys. They give them the title and a pension and say, see ya. look at uh, how the government is spending money, click on the image to watch a short video about the House of Lords. All right, we'll do that so I don't get copyright tagged. We're going to 